Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. This is the Farm All 856 Restoration, Episode 9. In this episode, I'm going to put a new rear main seal in the engine, assemble all the clutch components, and bring the two halves of the tractor back together. Before I get started on that, I want to bring up two points from the last video that some astute viewers brought up, and they both have to do with this input here in the transmission. The first is that my old torque amplifier had an oil slinger on it and this was, I think it was an aftermarket part and originally it was designed for older TAs. What happens is the, when the front TA seal wears back in the front of the TA inside the case here, it can shoot oil straight out toward this front seal and they made an oil slinger. It's a bronze ring looks like an old-fashioned oil slinger it doesn't really function as an oil slinger it's more of an oil diverter so if oil spraying straight forward it diverts it to the side instead of spraying it right onto the seal here i pulled this back out viewer brought it up put the slinger that i had back in i'll show you a photo of what it looks like and then before i could reassemble this i had to take care of another viewer comment which is that i got the seal depth in the PTO drive gear wrong and I'll show you a photo of that here. I seated it all the way down till it bottomed out in the bore and there's a factory spec of 0.690 inches or 690 thousandths down from the top of that gear shaft that the seal needs to be set. Fortunately I had a spare seal on hand that came with my clutch kit so I took the old one out and put that one in. These are very important things to keeping this assembly leak free. On to job number one, replacing this engine rear main seal. This crankshaft has a wear ring on it that needs to come off before I put the new seal on. You'll see a lot of folks will chisel this thin wear ring off. I'm gonna try a different method. Put a little heat on the wear ring. It doesn't have much of a press fit on here so hopefully it'll expand enough to come off. Then I won't have to worry about marking up the crankshaft end with a chisel at all. The wear ring is a fairly soft material so you can kind of dig into it with this. It's starting to come. Give it a little more heat. I think the key is that this pry bar can dig into the wear sleeve material, and that's what you use to get a purchase on it. It's barely even warm. Right there you can see where somebody nicked the crankshaft when they chiseled out the last sleeve in here. It's not protruding above, it's just protruding inside for a little bit. That'll be fine. Here's the wear ring. You can see where I dented it up, prying it out, but look at this groove in here. I imagine that's where the seal wrote. It almost looks like a machined groove, but it shouldn't be there. Very interesting. I guess it's been in there a while. I got a few little nicks where the pry bar must have touched it, so I'm just going to clean them up with a fine file and some 320 grit emery cloth. First step in the new rear main seal installation is the seal retainer. It's got a real thin gasket. I put Permatex high tech on both sides. And that goes on like this. These bolts go into through holes into the crankcase, so I'm putting a little bit of thread sealer on them. And I'm not going to tighten them down yet. I'll tell you why. The reason I'm not tightening them down all the way is because this has got some movement and I don't want to tighten them until the seal is in and it centers itself. These seals 
come in two flavors and both are still available. The first type is like the one that I pulled out of the tractor, the old seal, and it's a neoprene lip seal. The second flavor, and here's my new seal, is a Teflon seal. And the seal comes with the wear ring already in the assembly. It's got a plastic shim on the outside so it seats to the correct depth. The difference, according to Red Run Right, between these two is that the old style neoprene seals will last a couple years tight and then they start dripping. The Teflon seals will kind of glaze a little oil around them, like a very slow sort of seepage, but they don't wind up dripping after a couple years. They last longer. So I'm going with a neoprene, no, a Teflon seal. These seals, per the manufacturer's instructions, go in dry, no lubrication. And Joe at Red Run Right, who's been a great resource, told me a method for installing these. No special tool needed. The seal's about halfway in now, and I've had to go to two bolts with a stack of washers on them, and then alternate them around. However you're putting it in, with a block of wood or with screws like I did or with the tool, you just need to make sure that it's all going on evenly and doesn't get cocked to one side. So if you're careful, I don't think you really need the tool, you just need to have patience. So with the spacer ring seats it to the correct depth and you can see this is a Teflon dust ring back here and then there's another Teflon ring that faces the other way down in the seal that keeps engine oil from coming out. The way I set it is to a different depth than the official tool would have set it. I'm not as deep in, but it doesn't really matter as long as you've got the sleeve on the crankshaft good and the seal in the right relationship to the sleeve and the flywheel goes on without messing things up. It's all right. I called my supplier to make sure and he said, yep, that'll work. Next it's time to mount the flywheel. Before I mount the flywheel, I gotta put the pilot bearing in the flywheel. Before I put the pilot bearing in the flywheel, I wanna check it against what it mates with. And it is too tight. Yep, it is. I don't wanna be ramming the tractor back together and putting a lot of stress on the torque amplifier, so I'm just gonna stick some memory cloth here and work on this. Not quite, almost. It'd help if my emery cloth wasn't from 1982. <laughs> and again, there's not as much risk of taking too much off when your emery cloth is just cloth. That's all that's left. No emery, just cloth. There. Now the pilot bearing can go into the flywheel. With a snap ring to hold it in, just cooperate, will ya? Just be nice to me. I've had a rough day today. You know, it's been a rough day. What's the leading cause of dry skin? Towels. <laughs> Towels? <laughs> the snap ring doesn't stand a chance now that I'm armed with humor. Well, maybe it didn't like my joke. flip this over and make sure the snap ring is tight to the bearing or the bearing is tight to the snap ring. Yep. This 
surprisingly, I got this flywheel ground at Napa. One of the Napas nearby has still has a machine shop, at least to grind flywheels, and I think they did a good job. I had them grind the step to match so that we held this distance, and they did it overnight. They had it ready for me the next morning. I was pleased. Also kind of surprisingly, there were no plates on here with tabs to fold over to lock the bolts in place, so I'm using good old blue thread locker. These get torqued to 95 foot-pounds or 360 newton meters. You're not going to want to torque, are you? No, you're going to spin. Yeah. I blocked it with my bar. And you wonder how it got bent. On to putting the clutch linkage together, I have a new throwout bearing. the woodruff keys here and line them up with the yoke. There we go. Before I tighten the bolts on the yoke, I need to put this arm on the other end of the clutch shaft that works the transmission brake. And witness marks are always helpful too. As I suspected, you draw that and tight, or pretty close to tight, and you're in the right spot. Here's my old clutch driven disc, and here's my new one. They look pretty similar. You can get these in a four pad arrangement too, but I opted for the six pad for longer life. Interestingly, this wasn't that worn. I put the calipers on this and it was 0.390 total thickness. The new one's 0.410. Just a good idea to do it while you're in there. This is my new pressure plate assembly. And I'm going to make this tractor up differently than I would do it if it just had a single spline shaft. Make sure any oil is taken off of the pressure plate here. Now the driven disc. Springs go toward the pressure plate. Almost ready to put her back together. My dowels are lined up here and have started in their holes, but I think I'm a little bit humped in the middle. Two and a half, 
two and seven eighths. So both ends got to drop. You got to have it coming in square. Square now, two and a half all around. Now we just play with the jacks and wiggle. I have a hold up down here. The pilot bearing isn't touching the flywheel yet. You can look through the holes in the side of the flywheel and see where it's at. But this frame rail is racked out of position. It's catching on my stud here. This other bolt won't go through because this is twisted in relation to the engine back plate. It doesn't matter where these alignment bolts go. So I'll just put it up top where it isn't racked. Right down through that hole you can see that the end of the input shaft isn't touching the pilot bearing yet. Now we're hitting here. I gotta take those off. Remember I put these bolts in here to keep the engine from sagging against the rails, misaligning. We're almost there. Oh, now we're against the nuts. I gotta take them out. These guys right here. She's back in one piece, the gentle and easy way. Well, maybe not easy, but easy going. You don't want to ram these together. Of course, you never want to ram a tractor back together after a split, but it's a particular problem with anything with a torque amplifier on it because if you start ramming into the nose of it too much where it goes into the pilot bearing, you're going to hurt something inside of the torque amplifier, so they have to slide together, not be pulled together with bolts or beat together. I've got four of the bolts snugged up from the split and to test to make sure the pilot bearing and everything's in alignment all right, I got this transmission in neutral, the range transmission. If I turn the speed transmission in low gear, it feels good. You know, there's no binding. I just want to make sure before I Get everything all together. Of course, the reason I can do that is because the clutch isn't hooked up. Yeah, it's hanging loose on the input shaft. We're gonna get to that. First, though, I gotta get all these bolts in and tightened up between the two halves. This jack under the rear end can come off, come out. But these splitting stands stay on the front end because I'm going to use them to lift the front of the tractor to remove the front bolster to get at the front main seal on the crankshaft in the pulley. Now I got to get the clutch hooked up. This is going to be really difficult for me to show clearly, but underneath here, that's the pressure plate, back of the pressure plate. And <laughs> let me get the camera right here, the light. There's the pressure plate. And there's six bolts. My finger's on one of the holes in the pressure plate. I'm going to take a bolt in my fingers here. Put it in the hole in the pressure plate and kind of 
spin the pressure plate until I find the hole in the flywheel. Right there it is. To bring the next hole up, I need to turn the engine around a little bit and hence the flywheel and the clutch too now that it's bolted. I skipped a hole when I did it, that hole by the finger there. That's got a red shipping block in it to hold the pressure plate off the clutch until I get it tightened down. And so I'm doing the three alternate bolts first. And I can start tightening them down a little bit to start taking pressure off of those shipping blocks. Uh, we tighten it down gradually as we go around. Bolt number three. And then background bolt number one to tighten it down. Now with three bolts partially tightened and rotating to the fingers, that shipping block will come right out and I can put the three bolts in at the fingers. To get all the bolts snug down, you can turn the flywheel this way onto the last bolt until the next bolt comes up and then snug that one down until the flywheel turns and then on to the next one and on and on. To do final torque on the bolts, I just took a big screwdriver and slipped it in alongside the finger to hold the flywheel in place through the starter hole. And then I can torque them one by one. 95 foot-pounds. I think I can get half of them without rotating and then I can rotate and do the other half. And I'll mark them with a sharpie so I know which ones I've gotten. This should be the last one to tighten. Just to make sure that I've got them all, I bar the flywheel over through this hole and look to make sure I've got marker on each of the bolts. Full 360. And then I guess the last thing is to make sure that the clutch fingers, there's a throwout bearing there my fingers pointing to and the clutch fingers you can barely see them. Make sure they're all engaging the throwout bearing and they're even. Yep, looks fine. The first milestone in this project is getting the two halves of the tractor back together and we're headed toward the first major milestone of getting the powertrain all buttoned up and painted. I tend to divide these big jobs up into subtasks in my head following something called a critical path schedule that we used a lot in my old job and I think is used a lot in lots of fields for anything that requires a lot of little tasks to come together in a certain order to achieve the big result. Getting to that point, getting the powertrain painted, is a ways away yet. I still have to go through the PTO unit in the rear. I still have to take care of the seals and the draft sensing mechanism in the rear. I still have to rebuild the MCV pump. I still have to replace the front seal on the engine. I still have a whole bunch of little things to do here and there before the powertrain can be final cleaned and painted. Now, I hope to get to that point by the end of the winter season here and maybe do the paint when it's warm enough to throw the shop open and have good airflow through it. And then the project will slow down for the summer as I get busy with other things on the farm. I am really enjoying this project a lot. Lots of new challenges. I enjoy that. And I hope it's been interesting for you. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.